I all actually those do heels. remember there was one episode that I had to wear your heels. I think it was when I was like dressing up as you or something, and I went to go down the stairs and just ate it. Oh, no. <laughs> I did not know how to walk in heels. Hey guys, welcome to What Women Binge. Amanda, we're mixing it up this week. I like it. We've got our guest in the studio for her intro. Guys, this is my friend Taylor Spratler hello, from Melissa hello. Oh, Thank you, thank you. Yes, <laughs> We yes. just didn't want to miss a minute with this girl. Oh, and so we never do our intros with the person in the room, but you're going to be our guinea pig. It's going right. to feel super awkward. Are yeah, you ready? yeah okay, I'm so ready. Here we go. Okay, go for it. <laughs> uh, and tell me if anything's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Born in Hattiesburg, Mississippi in 1993. Hold on. Mama needs her glasses. <laughs> As she's holding Taylor's her not seen me with my glasses on, y'all. This is uh, this is new. This is forty six. Um, Taylor started acting in two thousand five in numerous commercials and modeling. What were some of those commercials? I don't remember. It was a long time ago. <laughs> what was my first one? Oh, my first one was a Chuck E. Cheese commercial. Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, yeah, a kid can be a kid. Yeah, I'm not sure, it was I awesome. saw it. <laughs> That's crazy because my kids were watching like at that time. I bet I. Your kids weren't born yet. No, that's true. They weren't. <laughs> no, wait. Right after that. I'm assuming the commercial stuck around for a while. I don't think Chuck E. Cheese did many commercials after yours. Yeah, true. <laughs> In 2009, she spent a season playing Mia McCormick on Days of Our Lives. Which, Days of Our li- Days of Our Life. Li- <laughs> life. One life. Actually, it has been on the air since 1965. I thought that was a funny yeah, little long tidbit. Time. It is. How was, how was playing Mia? Did you love Mia? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a little crazy. I was like 13 and I was pregnant and I oh, sold my baby on the black market wait. and I had to give birth on screen and they covered me in gelatin and like, oh, yeah, That's that was a really awkward conversation I had to have with my mom at a very young age. So she now wasn't you're ready never for children. Yeah, pretty much. That was enough for me. Yeah. Insane. That's wild. Yeah. Um, wait, I've got more. Uh, you've seen her in movies like Girl on the Edge. Yeah. Amityville. Oh. Leprechaun and The Contractor. Did you do all those while I've known you? Yes. Do you have a thing for horror? Yeah, I love it. But they like her. Yeah. Yeah. Final girl. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, She's guest starred on shows like Bones, Criminal Intent, SVU. How did you you find those? How do you find the... Um, SVU was my first TV show that I ever did. So did you enjoy that experience? I, I did not like my experience. Oh, really? <laughs> I enjoyed it so much that I went back and did another one. You did? Yeah. Look I went at back you. like 10 years later. So and you did didn't die one. in the first one then? No. Uh, actually, the first one, I played a really bad little sister. And then the second one, I was a really bad older sister. Oh. oh. Yeah. But Graduated. that wasn't the same character. No. Oh, that's Different. interesting. Yeah. You might be like the only person to come back twice on the show, I feel like. Then you were, well, you also starred alongside... I mean, besides our show, most enjoying. I'm going to skip that for now. Uh, alongside Kevin James and Kevin Can Wait. I did. What was that on CBS? CBS, yeah. And you did that for two years? Yeah. And funny fact, you shot that in my hometown, not my hometown, but my home island of Long Island. Yes, I did. Yeah, that was that was interesting. You were in yeah. Massapequa? Uh, um, we were in uh, Hicksville. Oh, Hicksville. Yeah. And but I remember telling you that you should live in Brooklyn, right? Did yes, I tell you, you did, and thank you so much for that. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Yeah, that is what you're you not like maybe 24. cut out for Long Island. Yeah, no, not quite the suburban housewife nope, just nope. yet. I was like, I think you need Brooklyn. <laughs> Do not go. But this girl doesn't drive. She didn't drive till she was like 25. Oh, nice. Something I was like 20, that. but yeah. <laughs> for you, it seemed like a lot longer. <laughs> um, let's see. Then, oh, most recently, you've been on Young Sheldon playing his college friend Sam, which. I know because I've directed it. Yeah. And that was yeah. fun. We got to work together again because I got to direct her. And, uh, but it's your role as Lennox, where we got to share the stage for five wonderful years on Melissa and Joey. Yep. Yeah. I can't believe it was five years. I, it seems longer and shorter. You know what I mean? I know. Well, it was weird. We took a year off in the middle. Yeah. So it was really four years, but it went on for five. I mean, we, like, yeah, technically we were like in cahoots for five years. I yeah. guess. Because we did what, 104, 104? episodes? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so let's talk about Melissa and Joey. So um, you weren't in the pilot episode. I was not in the pilot, no. So I'm... for people that don't know at home, pilot is like the very first episode that you like show the network to see. It's like a it's like a sample. Yeah. Right? The very yeah. first episode. And so there was a different girl playing Lennox, but she didn't make the cut. And then here comes our little Taylor. In... Actually, the first time we met was when? It was the photo shoot. Oh, yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. That's I remember awkward. that, yeah, because I met everybody that day, and then they were like, look like a big happy family, and I was like, I don't, I don't know, know these, these people. people. <laughs> and we'd okay. already done like two weeks of work together. Like, Yeah, everybody Joey. else knew each other. Everybody there was like 
friends at this point, and I was just like, hey, hey. Well, I brought in my hair, makeup, and wardrobe, so it was like my crew, yeah. and then like, and my mom producing it, and then Joey and I had known each other forever, and then Nick had done the pilot with us, so we did Nick Robinson, um, who we did two, I think we did like two weeks on the pilot together, so we all had like a shorthand a little bit there, and then Taylor comes in, and they're like, here's yeah. your new daughter. I was so Bring nervous. Me. I was just, it was, you know. It was very overwhelming meeting Melissa Joan Hart and Joey Lawrence and like just being like, okay, here you go. Like, <laughs> happy family. Yeah. Fam. Like, what? This is crazy. Do you remember the picture we did on the sofa? Of the one of you jumping? Yeah, but do you remember how we got to that point? Because didn't they want me to jump? Yes. And I was so nervous that I was just like, uh, uh. Yeah, they yeah. were like, um, we want Joey and Melissa sitting on the sofa and the kids jump. And I was like, um, no, that's yeah. not correct for our characters. I was like, I should be jumping. Melissa, Mel, Mel is like crazy person. Well, yeah, because also it's like playing like the angsty teen. What angsty yeah. teen is like jumping on a couch? So she like ended up back, sitting. Like, yeah, that's what she did. Rolling the eyes, arms crossed, and I'm jumping on the couch. And there's one where I'm like, my legs are in the air, like right. Yeah, ah. yeah. I'm glad I did. Isn't that. there one of Joey like carrying you in a laundry basket or something? <laughs> there is. I don't think that the ever ones, made it. Yeah, the, the ones that didn't make it are the good ones. I actually have them still. You I have do? a lot of them. Yeah. Oh, I want to see some. Yeah. There. I I remember that one. I love that one of the laundry basket. He was so mad because he didn't want to carry a laundry basket. He was like, "Joe doesn't do laundry or something." But the very first episode, he was like, so about him doing laundry. <laughs> Just to clarify, we've all watched the first episode recently, so we're ready to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. should we jump in? I mean, go for it. All right, what was your first thought, Taylor? Uh, my voice. Sounds so weird to me. It just was so, I, I don't know. I wasn't expecting it to sound so high, I guess. You were like, a lot younger than I remembered you being. Yeah. You were like a baby. I mean, how old were you? I was 15, 15 or 16. I feel like you were still, you and Nick were so young. His yeah, voice, his voice was, I mean, he was shorter than me. Yeah. Like when you watch the episode, it's like, just like I think our third season, he comes back and he's like a foot taller than me and his voice is really deep and he's like got acne and like just <laughs> going so through weird. puberty so hard. <laughs> yeah. Right there on national television yeah. for all to see. That's oh, what's yeah. great when you're growing up a child star is that the world gets to watch all these awkward changes. Yep. But um, but yeah, we the first episode, so I watched it again last night and actually ended up getting hooked on it. I was watching it with Tucker, my nine-year-old, and then Mason was there. And I mean, Mason and Brady were born when we started the show and then Tucker was born in the middle of the show. And uh, Mason, I remember him like coming to show nights and sitting in the audience sometimes, but he would sell bracelets backstage. Do you remember that? Yep, I remember For that. kids with cancer, he would sell, Aww. he would make rainbow looms, take orders, make rainbow looms. People give him money and he'd donate it to um, Supermax, uh, uh, which is um, Max Love Project, which is a, a boy named Max who was um, diagnosed with cancer and was rainbow looming in the hospital to, to pass his time. And then like Jimmy Kimmel did it, but you can YouTube Jimmy Kimmel with Supermax. It's kind of incredible he made this huge coat out of um rainbow looms oh wow and so mason used to do that on stage because he met max and he was just moved by the story and so he started like raising money backstage so mason remembers like all these great moments of being backstage he remembers the craft service table mainly oh i'm sure yeah he would always save live candy oh yeah it was the donuts but i was watching it going okay first of all wish i had my body back like that again thought i was fat like wish I had that back in a like heartbeat. This is not every woman's plight oh. ever, though. <laughs> I know. Right? Yeah, yeah. Enjoy it while you're young, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you were also getting made up by professionals That's every true. day yeah, and true. wearing and style heels and gorgeous, yeah. lots of spanks. Yeah, but I just want my arms back. I just want my arms back. That's why I went to Orange Theory this morning. <laughs> but then Amanda keeps feeding me Twin Snake. Gummies. Oh, but they're so good. Yeah, I live if a little. If you can't do orange, th- that's the balance in life. Yeah. Twin snakes and orange, orange theory. theory. But see, I need to cut out the twin snakes right now to get the arms back from the Melissa and Joey days. I don't think a couple of twin snakes is going to be your downfall. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but yeah, I was uh, so Mason was Mason sat down and watched it uh, like maybe halfway through the first one, and then Brady walks through the room, who's fourteen, and is like. You're not funny, Mom. And Mason goes, "Shut up, she is." Actually, Joey's really funny, but it's a, this is a good <laughs> oh, show. Kind of, I, I'm kind of hooked. And Tucker was like, "Can I go to bed now?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, go to bed." <laughs> but he was fascinated by Nick because, of course, he loves uh, he loves dinosaurs. So he loves that our co-star Nick Robinson went off to yeah. do Jurassic World. Yeah, and the first one, right? The first one. Yeah, I remember he left yeah. us for a few weeks. So if you yeah. notice, he's missing from the show in the fourth season. Yeah, what did we say? He. Oh, I oh, went to the Navy? Was that yeah, when he went to the yeah. Navy? Yeah, and then he comes back really, at the end. Really, it was Jurassic World. Yeah, really, it was. It really was Jurassic World. The dinosaur yeah. force. We, we say Navy. Branch again. Yeah, he's really in Hawaii in a giant rolling acrylic ball. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. 
I know, because he didn't even tell us. No. We found out, and he, like, walked on set, and we were like, you just, you did it just slip your mind that you're, yeah. like, going to be a massive movie star now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> would have been good to know. Yeah. yeah. He had done a Sundance movie that did really well, Boys of Summer, I think it was called. Yeah. Yep. And then, yeah, off to Jurassic World and then Love, Simon and tons of stuff. Killing it. Yeah, it really yeah. is. It really is. Before you book any brunch, you pour over lists and lists of reviews, right? Mm-hmm. So why not do the same when you're booking a doctor's appointment? With ZocDoc, you can see real, verified patient reviews to help you find the right doctor in your network and in your neighborhood. After all, finding the right doctor is just as, if not more, important than finding the right plate of eggs benedict. It's true. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Go to ZocDoc.com slash WWB and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash WWB. ZocDoc.com slash WWB. Um, but God, he was so little in the episode. His voice is so high. So high. Oh my gosh. Adorable. It was so funny. And then I make so many jokes in the show about Joey's hair. Yeah, I didn't really, I forgot about that, of how much we kind of That was an intense hairline he had going on. He laid into yeah. it. Yeah, he had really shaved it short. He had gone with the short, short. Is that his natural hairline? I don't know. <laughs> but no he. questions. So yeah. He's, <laughs> we all do. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, Joey was always known for his long, luscious locks right, and blossoms. So I think, um, I don't know, I think people really had a hard time with the fact that he was Practically shaved bald in the first yeah. episode. And there were but big jokes about Mr. More hair as the seasons progressed. Yeah, he changes it. He would go yeah. like kind of mohawkish or whatever you call it, faux hawk, mm-hmm. like higher in the middle. He did whatever, like, he would like have different role models at different times. I remember him one time being like, Ryan Gosling wears his hair this way, or like, you know, he's like, he always, yeah. you know. That's interesting. Yeah, he always has someone he's kind of modeling. I mean, maybe it was his way, though, of kind of like separating himself, you know, yeah. from Boston, I think. A new like, Joey. Yeah. But he, yeah, he went really, really short and actually, by the time we get to the Halloween episode, which is probably episode six or something, he's Mr. Clean. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was the joke. He, like, has the gloves. And, yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. And the, the earring. I and haven't the gotten that far yet. Yeah. yeah. Don't you just, like, give him one of your earrings and you're like, here, you're dressed. Because we, oh, like, yeah. ran off with our dad. It sounds weird to be like, we ran off with our dad. But, yeah. what, right? Wasn't he, oh, like, dad, hiding in the I'm not attic? At this point. Yeah. He's still oh, in prison. Oh, spoiler alert. No. No. No, mom's in prison. Oh. Dad's oh, on the dad's run. Oh, dad's gone. We All right, know where so he is. So to set up for anyone at home that hasn't watched this the show, it's that. Uh, I'm I play Mel Burke, who's a city councilwoman who uh, uh, kind of takes in her niece and nephew because her sister's in jail and the father's on the lam. And so I have to take Great in my niece family and sitcom. <laughs> yes. No, I know. <laughs> Setting it up was always hard because it, but it's actually really funny. But it's actually like it's the show I'll watch of all yeah. my shows. Like everyone gets mad at me when I say that, but it's the show I like to watch. Yeah. And um, because it's funny, it's ridiculous, it's over the top, and I get to be just a big fat mess. I'm just a total like dumpster fire like I love it but I look gorgeous so it's amazing <laughs> I'm a big glamorous dumpster fire. dumpster fire well I like playing flawed characters and I never really got to do that before and she's very flawed um, but she's flawed because she doesn't know how to parent and here she is being fancy and she was like a wealthy kid growing up who um, who acts you know really spoiled she's big lush yeah yeah <laughs> All so the things, all, all the, the things. fun things. So terrible at parenting, but needs a nanny, needs some help. And uh, Joey knocks on the door looking for your father because mm-hmm. he's he stole all his money. His car is being repossessed. His wife left him and he's like down and out, basically homeless, living in his car and needs a job. So he knocks on my door to find the guy who did this to him. He wants to kick his ass, but he ends up working for us and, and taking helping take care yeah. of the kids. Right. So he's it's basically a man. Manny. Yeah. Yep. So tell us about your character. Lennox? Lennox. Oh, my fave. Honestly, I do. Like, it is funny watching it because I feel like I was so much like Lennox and I still kind of, like, I still am. That sometimes I actually it, said like, that. I've only <laughs> met did. Taylor one other time, but yeah. watching it last night with my husband, I was like, this is not a stretch for her. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> well, and I also think because, like, I told everybody so much about my life. Like, I was going through everything at that time, you know, yeah. like breakups and whatever. And I feel like I would like tell you guys stories, and then the next week I would be like reading a script, and I'd be like, "Okay, well, here we go." Like, <laughs> they, here's the yeah, helping me through my art imitates some stuff. life, and yeah. life imitates art in a really, really freaky way. I remember the first time I recognized that happening on Sabrina. There was an episode about Sabrina being stuck in her own bad mood, and I realized I was in a bad mood the whole week. And it's like, yeah, how much of this do you actually, yeah, personify like what's coming off the page or what you're like? Do you bring it home or vice versa? And 
Uh, yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. You felt like that. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. I I just I enjoyed that show so much. I think you can tell how much we all enjoyed it. And you can tell that we were crying throughout the entire last episode. Yeah. Like oh, our rap party. Every picture is us just trying to smile with like tears in our eyes. I got like, so drunk just trying oh to like my gosh. just yeah. dancing. I'm like hugging Joey. You like and crazy. I were so drunk. And I we knew so you drunk. were drunk because you were just every time I looked over, you were hugging somebody whispering in their ear, just like, I just appreciate you so much. <laughs> Uh, here's the thing. I've never really, look, I always thought every season of every show, you think it's going to end, right? So you kind of say your goodbyes, but you're not sure. Yeah. This one, we knew it was the end. And it was a character that I realized I was like, as much as I wanted to go home, because I was living on the East Coast, but working on the West Coast for five years, which was really hard to yeah. get away from my kids and my family. But when I realized it was over and I realized I wasn't going to get to do this every day, our showrunner, David Kendall, he used to give me compliments and I don't like compliments. So he started coming up to me and saying, I'm not giving you a compliment. And I started going, oh, thank you. Because I like everything else that would fall on deaf ears a little bit. I'd be like, I can't, I don't, I can't hear you. And then I realized that he was like not giving me compliments was the compliment. And so still to this day on Thursday nights, because we filmed on Thursdays, he was, he'll send me a text and be just be like, you're pretty and you're talented. Because I cried like leaving this character. I was like, first of all, I'm going to miss this character. How am I never going to play her again? And second of all, when I go home, nobody's like, yay, you clean that dish so well. Or, oh, my gosh, those slippers look so comfy. Oh, I forgot to give you slippers. You got to pick some slippers. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Slippers out while I tell the rest of my story. But anyway, I just, he was like, he was always like, uh, David, I, I told David, I was like, I who's going to, like, give me these compliments at home? Who's going to, like, tell me I'm funny and pretty every, like, all these people tell me every week that I'm funny and I'm pretty and I'm talented and all these things. Me. No, now it's Amanda. <laughs> but so he every once in a while send me a text. And that is what it's like me. being married to an actor. <laughs> I need constant compliments. Tell me I'm funny. Tell but me I'm funny, pretty. I don't. I don't. But there was something about that show. I think it was playing that character that made me because words of affirmation is definitely one of my last love languages. But I think it was something about that character that I felt like I loved her and I loved how she made me feel about myself because I I knew I could like tackle her in a way. Yeah. And. Um, it was just fun to slip under her very high heels and put on that makeup and those hair pieces and then just like go all out. Yeah. And I was going to miss that. We cried for like three. It was like three weeks. Oh, we yeah. Cried. We yeah. We were a mess. At the I, end of every show, we were like, yeah, yeah we only get one more. Yeah. One more day. One I mean, more day. I think we all well, I can't speak for everyone, but I know you and I especially like because you and I were very close. Like yeah. we. You know, and it was our entire crew. Like I had, I showed up every morning and like Dean or Sharky would be there waiting for me when I pulled into my parking spot. Yeah. I would get to work early just so I could like have a conversation basically with my friends before yeah. we had to go like start the work day. Yeah. And I don't know of many, you know, people who want to go to their work early. Early. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not Joey and Nick. Yeah. No, they were notoriously <laughs> late. Joey and Nick were. <laughs> Joey got stuck stories. in traffic every day. And I'm like, OK, if you drive the same route, I'm calling him out right here. He right lived now. across the street. Taylor, you learn for two years. He lived across the, the traffic. The street. I know. No, he literally lived across the street. Like, I don't even know why he would drive. Because I lived across the street and I rode yeah, my bike. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was fun yeah, on the Friday true. night. We after all a lived like right around the block. We all lived very close. It was like ridiculous. He, towards the end, at the last season, he moved way out. And I think yeah. he was more on time that season than he was before. Well, in his defense, I when I was in high school, I lived like 47 seconds from my high school. Like we timed it. And my sister and I were like every single day. I mean, maybe it's because you're in your head. You're like, oh, it's, it's only just 47 right there. Yeah. yeah, I can leave at the moment of. Yeah. I mean, I was always 10 minutes late, but Joey was always like 30 or 40. And it got to be, uh, come on, dude. Like, we, we want to get the day going and get done. But we did enjoy the time. I mean, we made friends like our Dean and uh, and Ron and like all the, all of the crew became super close. And the directors, we had fabulous directors rolling in. Yeah. I want to talk about uh, writers. who's dressing you guys because oh. I want oh. all the things. Obviously. Yeah, so Allison Fanger was our designer um, for the first, like, three seasons, I think. Um, and then Heather Payne took over after for her. Um, but Heather worked there the whole time, too. Uh, just, yeah, I mean, my dresses were all the best, like, Maj and, and Theory and... Beautiful. Um, oh my gosh. And yeah. you were so cute. Yeah. Like I, the icon <laughs> of high school fashion. I know. For that I, time. Fantastic fashion. Well, I actually still see your pieces. Yeah, I do too, actually. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I have a lot of Lennox 6 clothes. Uh, yeah, watching it back, I'm like, wow, it was very, you know, it was very different. I, th I think that's one of my favorite things about Lennox is like she was definitely an individual. And I feel yes. like at that time, like having 
a like young little like feminist who I mean, our pilot episode, yeah. I wrote a poem <laughs> about my principal and said some, you know, not so nice words about her and Rhymed like I'm her name that didn't go over well yeah. with Ms. Lunt. <laughs> that was so cute. Yeah. Also, but, the outfit you wear in the scene where you go into her office with the little skirt. I was like, can we oh, just yeah. appreciate I actually remember hating that outfit, but really? because it was what the other girl wore in the oh, pilot. Yeah. Oh, so it was like all of the same outfits, and it just kind of felt weird to put on somebody else's clothes. But also, like I hate wearing tights. I hate it. I hate it. Oh, I hate yeah. it. And I had to wear it. And when you film a TV show, you're in those clothes for multiple days. You right. know, like for a pretty long time. And I just remember being so uncomfortable. <laughs> hey, you didn't have to have like three layers of spanks on like I did. They kept well, putting me in spanks all the time. Heels like you did. I all actually do heels. remember there was one episode. That I had to wear your heels. I think it was when I was like dressing up as you or something. And I went to go down the stairs and just ate it. Oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> I did not know how to walk in heels. And yeah, I think, oh it's, in our, I think it's in our blooper reel of me just coming down the stairs like so confident. <laughs> and then just sliding all the way down. We'll put out some bloopers at some point. <laughs> hey, Amanda, did you know that 30 million women are impacted by weakening or thinning hair? Like I have noticed as I've gotten older that my hair is getting thinner, a little kinkier, like yeah. it's just changing texture and I got a little freaked out. So I started using something new called Nutrafol. How are you liking it? I'm loving it. I've only just started and I'm so excited to see the results because it's got great recommendations. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement and it's clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness and visible scalp coverage. It also supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting the five root causes of thinning, which is stress, hormones, environment, nutrition and metabolism. Nutrafol has three unique formulas to support women throughout all stages of life, including postpartum and menopause. Each formula is physician-formulated using natural, drug-free, medical-grade ingredients in consistently effective dosages, so you can get the most reliable results. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth over six months. 3,000-plus top doctors and stylists recommend Nutrafol as an effective and high-quality solution for healthier hair. And you, too, can grow thicker, healthier hair, and you can support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code WWB, like what women binge, to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com, promo code WWB. And thanks for supporting our show, Nutrafol. I, I was watching one of the episodes last night, maybe two or three, and I'm carrying these Louboutins. They're like metallic silver blue, silver and blue. And uh, I, I must have been carrying them because I still remember. I think I still have them because I know they're expensive, really fancy shoes, but they are a half size too small. They were the most uncomfortable thing yeah. ever. Oh, yeah. I but can, I can't get rid of them. I can watch that episode and be like, I can tell that your feet are killing oh. you and you are not. I'm walking like arch back. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm just trying to stay upright. <laughs> like, yeah. And walking shoes a decent. Shoes are worth it. Well, but I also like to walk fast. Because we had to wear foam on the bottom of our shoes oh. a lot so that oh, it wouldn't so make click. noise. Yeah. And so that's you, just. That makes you really unstable. You're like walking on a mattress on high heels. And it's so slippery. It's kind of like walking in grass, right? Yeah. Like it's slippery. It's, it's, it, it's not. You don't have any kind of grip. It's, ugh. But yeah, then, it's yeah, not fun. It's like walk like you're, you know, the star of a television show. But. Yeah, a giraffe on ice skate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And I'm like already, I just like to move fast. And I'm I'm the kind of girl that's always worn my whole life. Like I've worn like combat boots, Converse, like sneakers. Like I don't do heels unless I'm on set. And even then I have my slippers nearby. Yep. <laughs> that is one thing I learned from you that I definitely carried on through the rest of my careers. Like I need slippers immediately. Very because, close. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what I will say about what was so fun working with you is like a lot of time you'll work with younger actors and they want nothing to do with the older actors. But you like became my my little friend. And like, oh, yeah, I was so I think I have to a daughter right here. Really? I mean, she needs that because I have so many. <laughs> yeah, <boys>. That's true. <laughs> but like There's a lot of testosterone. But She was like house. willing to listen, which is like such a night. Nice, like it was like nice bonding time. Like I would. You'd ask advice. I'd give advice. You'd actually listen instead of being like, yeah, yeah, I got it. But I would be like, hey, try this. And you'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. And it was like really nice that that my, I don't know, that my expertise or my like my years before had like mattered to you. Well, yeah. I mean, I think I would be an idiot if I was sitting there with somebody who's been as successful as you are and who has lived what I was living through at the time. Like I would be a complete idiot to not listen to you. And like, you know, I feel like there's a lot of things that like, 
Not that you necessarily kept me out of trouble, but <laughs> you kept no, me I professional. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even things like I remember you were graduating high school, and I remember that you know on the set of Clarissa they threw me a, a high school graduation, and I was mm-hmm. like, I want to do that for you. So getting you a cap and gown and yep. a podium oh, and, that's yeah. so cute. and a diploma. Yeah. Was it Melissa and Joey High School? Yeah. Is that Graduated what from Melissa and Joey High School. <laughs> um, my cap is signed by the entire crew. Oh. I remember that because I remember you guys did it when we were filming an episode. I think that we went to the Kings of Leon concert or something. Oh. And we jumped out of a window. Because I think I had a oh, fake yeah. ID. And then we yeah. were about to get caught. So we jumped out of a window and I jumped into a dumpster. <laughs> And then they were like, Taylor, we just need to hold the shot of you in the dumpster. So I was in the dumpster for like a hot minute and I was getting so annoyed. And then I came out of the dumpster and you guys were like, you graduated high school. Congratulations. Get out of the dumpster. Come up to the podium. <laughs> Literally That's climbing out of the dumpster. Like the most child actor thing ever. Like, Come on out of the dumpster. Here's a diploma. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but... But it's fun. It's That's yeah. so funny. I, uh, I I forgot about that. Yeah. Was I, did I climb out that window? No. I no, think I, was, I think you pushed me out the out window. The window. <laughs> <laughs> we did some funny, stupid stuff. Yeah. I mean, we because like we're dating at the same time in the show and whatnot. Like only the kind of thing like an aunt and niece can really yeah. do. Um, where it's like it's not weird and creepy. Yeah. It was. It was really fun. Yeah. We no, had, we had a lot of fun. We got to do a lot of fun episodes and stuff. That. What was your favorite episode? My favorite episode? Um, I mean, honestly, I really liked the one, not just because I graduated high school, but I really liked the one where we went to the concert. Like, I liked those. Cause not when we were Dolly Parton riding the, oh, yeah. we've got this great picture we have to show her. Oh, my gosh. We're riding I still the have ride the at t-shirt. Dollywood. You do? Yeah. I think I do, too. Yeah. I have that, and I have the Chris Rich t-shirt that he, yeah, I think he might have oh God, even. So many great guest stars, yeah. too. I know. When I was watching it and I saw Chris Rich, I was like, oh, my gosh, my grandpa. Hey, you, like, binged it all last night, didn't you? I have seen a lot of it. And it's, <laughs> yeah, it's very awkward to watch yourself. But <laughs> also, though, thank gosh, our show is funny because I'm like, it okay, is. I, like, you know, it's not like I'm sitting there being, like, total cringe. I, I love know. that you made your boyfriend watch it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, because he, I, I never let him watch, like, anything that I do just because it's like, I don't want to sit down and watch. Like, I was yeah. there. I did it. I don't need to watch it again. That's how I feel. Yeah. But watching that, I was like, oh, like, so many stories <laughs> and so many good memories. But, yeah, he was like, this is a lot like you, honestly. Like, you still you still talk like this. Well, it's funny. <laughs> I texted you and I was like, hey, do you want to do, like, a watch-along episode or watch our ep- watch, you know, a few episodes when you were like, you said something like "absolutely yes" or something like you like it was very emphatic. It was yeah. Like, well, because yeah, I do, that. do think we should do that because I think it would be a lot of fun us watching be. it and like certain stuff that I, I don't just remember love to that see maybe your you facial would. Expressions. I know. Yeah, we do need a reaction video. Funny. Yeah, we got to take. So, we got to. Although like, it is cringy, it's sort of you're sort of like, yeah. uh, do I want to watch? Well, I don't think anybody I wonder, like knowing what I how I know you now. And I don't know you well enough to know, but like certain things like where you make expressions, I'm like, I wonder what was happening behind her that made her make that face. <laughs> like, oh, like yeah. was my shoe pinching me? So there or... was some, like, you know, little things where I'd be like, oh, she's uncomfortable right now. <laughs> or something's really pissing her Is off. Is it usually when I'm like trying to kiss someone? Well, no, like in the first episode, the one I remember is you. it's right at the end where you're about to like tear up the little paper. Uh-huh. And like... You make this face that I know you only make when you're like aggravated. <laughs> and so I was like, I wonder what ticked her off. Because <laughs> you're like clearly acting and you're like, oh. But then if I had to do it like, again, like maybe there was a noise offset or something happened. Where I don't I know, but I would like, probably just had to film the same thing like 10 times. And over and you're probably, just do it again. Piece of paper. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and you're supposed to like, you know, kind of. I'm be, supposed to be thinking of Joey like, like, oh, maybe this could be good. Could we? Couldn't we? But I'm also yeah. seeing like this like. <laughs> like in your head. Something's yeah. going on. That is the funniest thing because, like, I did kind of jump forward. It's like, let's watch some later ones where I'm not like 16 because this feels kind of strange. <laughs> and it's funny watching like you and Joey start to like get together. I don't know, just because, oh, yeah, knowing like both of you still don't just watching it, it. It's funny. Like, wait, so y'all get together? I, was on like 10 years ago. I know, but <laughs> yeah, the last Fine. season, the last Move season, the last Sorry. season we're together. And, uh, yeah. Going into that season, knowing that that was going to happen uh, was a little I've known him since I was four years old. And it was like, it's going to be like kissing my brother. And that's the first time you ever I, kissed him. 
Uh, no, because we had done a movie together. Oh, okay. Actually, we had done a movie together, but we hadn't worked together like this before. Doing the movie was a little bit more anonymous in a way. Like, we weren't quite that friendly yet. I mean, well, also, we've known you guys each other worked together still. almost every day for four years by yeah. the time you got together on the show. And so then we like... get, and then all of a sudden we get together. We had accidental kisses like twice. Yeah. And that was it. But, um, yeah, it was weird because, uh, I don't know. I, you know, Joey and I have this really interesting relationship, and I wonder if he would agree, but I bet Taylor will. But um, <laughs> where we're sort of like brother and sister, where I'm like, I want to kill him, I want to strangle him, you and also adore him. I want, but if anyone else tries, I will, I will rip their eyes out. Right. Like, you know, like I defend him, and I, I, I do, and that's the thing. I think at the rap party when I was so drunk, I was just telling him how much I loved him. And that he was such a good part of, like, he was he was such a great co-star, and it was so, you know, as frustrated as I was that he would um, show up so late all the time and be doing so many push-ups in his dressing room. But he, that guy hits his marks, knows his lines, is <laughs> funny as shit. Arms. Yeah, yeah. He That's was, how you're going to get those arms back. I got to do push-ups every take. In the, in the dressing room. That's a good idea. I should go do something. Yeah, his dressing room was funny because, you know, he had two little girls, and it would be like you'd go into his dressing room and it'd be a dollhouse and then just wait. <laughs> and wait. And that was like all that was in his dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> and then yours, your dressing room looked like you, it was your second home. You I had decorated so it. Much, it looked yeah. like this a little bit. Yeah. It, it kind of looked like this. Yeah, I had my kids, uh, my kids' artwork framed on the walls and like um, I had them put in, like, because when they're set dressing, I'm like, hey guys, throw some stuff in my dressing room. So they give us some like nice drapes. and Oh, that's nice. Yeah. A little rug and some stuff like that. So yeah, they made it nice for me. It was also supposed to be where my kids did their school, which they didn't, thankfully. That would have been tough. Yeah. Oof. Well, we had a school room. Did they ever do school in there? I know. They weren't really allowed to join you guys in the school room. Actually, at that point, it was just Nick, but they weren't really allowed. Um, oh, yeah. That was doing school and working. Like, that is just Sucks. one thing that I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so boring. <laughs> Awful. But then yeah. your school room became our bar on Friday yeah. nights. <laughs> Yeah, we started, yep. we started, we, you know, the writers, so our dressing rooms were, actually, we changed dressing rooms every year. Yeah. So really, I'm just kind you of thinking have, about, like, you the last keep one. your space. You no. You redo it every year. Well, we had to change sound stages, like, Hot in Cleveland came in our sound stage, and then Baby Daddy yeah. came in our sound stage. So everybody kept, like, taking, kicking us out, which was so frustrating. One year, our dressing rooms were, like, across the lot from our, like, around the, like, around the corner, and you had to go, like, leave the... It was it was just way too far to have to, like, go to the bathroom, you know? Yeah. So I would tend to not go to my dressing room at all over there when it was in that, yeah. that weird. We were in, like, a like an office building, and then the soundstage was, like, around the corner. And then hair and makeup was over there. So you had to, like, walk forever. And you'd have to walk past all the fans coming in to see the show on Friday night. Because we did a live show. It was, all, it was yeah. the first time I'd ever done a live show. All really? my other shows. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sabrina and Clarissa were all um, done... In, not in front of an audience. They were all done, uh, film rehearsed Monday, Tuesday, film Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we mimicked Sabrina off of Clarissa because of the cat and the special effects and stuff. But then Melissa and Joey comes around, and I mean, I, I had guest starred on like seventy show and other stuff, but um, so I'd done stuff in front of an audience, and I'd done theater, but there's just something seventy show. There's yeah. a guy from that seventy show yeah. in the first episode. He I know he's the angry uh, the, guy with at, the trash bag. Yeah. He's Ooh, in the uh, city council oh meeting. Both it's uh, Jackie's what we're talking dad. About. I can't say it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't even realize that. We, we did have crossover. some great guests. We had Mason noticed last night because he was looking through. He was trying to re realize who Theo was, I think, from episode two. He, the guy who I go on a date with. And he's trying to, Mason was trying to figure out who he was because he recognized him. But then Mason realized that Brian Baumgarten was on from oh, The Office. Yeah. And he's like, you know him? Can we call him right now? And I was like, all my kids need to calm down with me calling people. <laughs> Like, honestly, Tucker, Brady had me uh, FaceTime Sean Astin the other day for a, a school report, but he wanted me to get Bill Murray. And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> Can you imagine? I bet it would be really fun to be left around your phone for just long enough. My phone? As one of your calls children, or texts? Just to like. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. That's dangerous. That's a dangerous game. My kid. <laughs> Especially Tucker. I would I would totally see Tucker. Oh, Tucker like, will FaceTime oh, Sean Astin FaceTime. all the time because he's obsessed with Stranger Things. He's That's like, so can funny. I talk to him That's about so Bob? Cute. Can I talk to him about Bob? But we had, so we had Brian Bob, we had Doris. Okay, one of my favorite episodes was, and we had Marissa on the show yeah. already, but um, when Marissa Jarrett Winoker was on and Kevin um, was on as, and yep. he becomes your love interest. Yep. Uh, what was his name? Kevin who? Marco. Marco. Oh, he plays Marco, yeah. Yeah. Kevin Fontaine. Yeah, he's... Have you seen his Instagram recently? Is he dreamy? No. He is dreamy. <laughs> I'm like, I need to put that guy in a 
another Christmas movie or something because he is super dreamy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah so I love Kevin. Kevin. He's great. So he plays Marco, and then Doris Roberts plays the grandma, mm-hmm. and Megan Hilty, yeah, played his ex-wife, um, uh, Tiff. Tiffany. Yeah. Tiff, Tiffany. yeah. Tiffy Pop. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tiffy Pop. So we did this two episode. It was two episodes. This like little um, like crossover. Not crossover. But we had two episodes dedicated to this idea that Joey has to go see his family in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And I have to pretend to be Megan Hilty's character, Tiffany, his ex-wife, to make grandma happy. And oh, and it's Faith Prince, too, who's fantastic. And Chris Rich plays my dad. But um, he's not in that episode. No, I'm thinking of the wedding episode because yeah. Chris Rich shows up. In the wedding episode, and so does Faith Prince, but um, yeah, we 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 go to Jersey, and I I we have these huge boobs and this tight skirt and these huge heels, and I'm like clogging around trying to like make Grandma happy, and Joey and I end up in bed together and can't decide if we've slept together or not, something like that. Yeah, you guys like can't remember or yeah, we can't remember what happened exactly, but we woke up in bed together. Um, Scandalous. I don't remember what happens. You guys will have to watch. But then my favorite episode, and I think you'll agree, we did like I think it was a Christmas episode. Where, oh my gosh, yeah, yep. <laughs> I totally, I read this script and I went, this is the worst, did you Did you agree with me? I, I thought it was the worst idea I'd ever read on paper ever. And I was like, yeah. gonna go to the producer, I was a producer, but I was gonna go to the writers, the writer producers and say, I'm not doing this, this is so stupid. What was it? <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it was so me. stupid, but like it was so much fun it and worked. it ended up being, it was like, what was the whole thing that, you and Joey start arguing about whose star is going to go on the top of the Christmas tree. So then we go into oh, like the yeah. whole history of like the Burke family. Where the tree, where the star comes from yeah. in history. Like who's how it's been passed down through. I forgot about that. Yeah. Passed down through generations. And we go back to like 1830. We go back to Gone with the Wind. Yeah. Era, right? <laughs> and it's like Civil War era. And I'm, we're just like in these uh, ridiculous costumes, but we're. Saying things like, I think your fly's down, although flies haven't been invented yet. And like, you know, just yeah, like, like, it, was like it was so just like slapstick. Like it was, oh my gosh. Uh, it was like a, yeah, it was. We like, all had accents. Yeah. Yeah. Really bad accents. <laughs> you and I could not handle our costumes. <laughs> we were constantly <laughs> we had, like giant skirts, giant like, corsets, corsets. <laughs> corsets. <laughs> So there is a video of us. You know how I always talk about how we did karaoke. Mm-hmm. Amanda and I went to the uh, Kentucky Derby this year, and for some reason, I chose "All About That Bass" as oh our gosh. karaoke song. <laughs> it was there's us in these costumes going because you know um I think it was a Vine or something. Did we yeah. do a Vine? Yeah, when Vine. All was about that bass, about that bass, and That's we're just where like, it came from. You were channeling that moment. I was actually yeah in that yeah. gown in that like corset. Yeah, when Chris Rich is supposed to like swing his cane, and we're supposed to duck. duck. But we didn't. We realized that we couldn't duck because we're wearing corsets. We're wearing corsets. <laughs> so he swings the so cane. Like, Melissa goes down, <laughs> grabs on to me for support, pulls me down with her, and then we're we on the ground sideways like a bunch of. Trees. And you can't bend your waist. To get <laughs> we up, can't. So you're just... Yeah. In rehearsal, it worked great, but all of a sudden, when you're in costume and you can't duck, yeah. and we went down like timber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just and we were just stuck on the ground. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot about that. <laughs> It was, we laughed so hard that week. And honestly, at the beginning of the week, I was like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. They're going to have yeah. to, they're going to have to pull up another episode. We're going to have to take a week off because I'm not doing this. This is so stupid. And then we did the table read. We're like, this is really funny. Yeah. Like once you hear it, sometimes when you read things, you know, they don't come alive. And then when you, when you do it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazingly ridiculous. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and I think too, because we all just kind of committed to it at the table read because we were like, this is so bizarre like so kind of out of any episode that we had really done yeah so all of us were sense. like whatever let's just be like as dumb as possible it's probably going to change but then that's what made it so funny and all of us were like oh well no we have to do it yeah it turned out amazing i mean yeah. it was like to the point where we were like should we do a spin-off of this like yeah it was this a could lot be a fun, fun spin-off thing and then i thought that about the the jersey episodes too that we could yeah the spin-off. jersey episodes were great and then wasn't there one that we like went to the future? Like you, I was gonna say when you said Joey you need to fast forward to the future, I thought you meant that episode. Oh yeah, no, because uh, you're like old. I don't know. And married to yeah. Sterling. That is not up there on my favorite episodes for the reason of them trying to figure out how to make us look old, and they were like going to do it like old school kind of like theater way where they put basically toilet paper on our faces and like just glued it to our faces. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, oh, no, like after hours of us doing that, we did a camera test and they were like, nah, it doesn't work. Go take it off. You're like, thank God. Ooh. And oh, my gosh, our skin and poor Sterling because he had facial hair, too. So it was Ooh. like, oh, so man, paper it mache was brutal. Kind of. It was very painful. What about that? Yeah. Um, 
Sterling Knight was he played your beau for a very long time. Yeah. But that so you're with Sterling. What's his character's name again? Oh goodness. Xander. Xander. So you're with Xander and then you go Lennox for Marco. And Xander. Yeah, the Lennox and Xander. Right? Exes. Yeah. yeah, we yeah, we had some weird kind of some interesting names on that show. Yeah, we did. Which is interesting cuz like our writers aren't those kinds of people in a way. Yeah. Like <laughs> Yeah. We also were like in Toledo, Ohio. Toledo. Like. <laughs> That's right. We got so much stuff on the set that said Toledo. Yeah. I still have a shirt that says something. There's some famous sign from Toledo. That's yeah. When I was watching back like some of the episodes, I was like, wow, I have a, I have a lot of stuff from the set. I didn't realize how much I took. <laughs> <laughs> well, we stole like, I remember going through the wardrobe racks with you at the end. They filled yeah. the whole soundstage with wardrobe racks and we went through. I have a pair of your cowboy boots if you want them. Oh, really? Yeah. They're really cute. Wow. Yeah. wear the same size shoe. Mm-hmm. Yep. All of you nugget people. <laughs> She's a lot like, Taylor's a lot like one of my, so my sister, who's in the second episode with you, yep. walks in as your friend. Yeah, I totally um, forgot about that. I was like, oh, Allie. I know, what? I did too. I was like, oh, guys, there's Aunt Allie. Um, but she uh, she got she got really jealous of Taylor because Taylor and I spent a lot of time together and Allie's the same age and Allie got a little bit jealous, I think. Yeah, we did spend a lot of time together. But I mean, we... And we was- had like a shorthand and she and I... She was like in high school and didn't want anything to do with yeah. me. And she went up to college and now she lives in Paris. And I still see you more yeah, than I see her. Like <laughs> just so cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she is uber cool. She's a curator at a Paris gallery and she's with impeccable art taste. Getting her third yeah. master's at La Sorbonne or something That's like that. Amazing. Yeah. She's really, she's a really cool kid. She's coming here to visit me for the first time since the pandemic. So I'm excited to see her. That'll be fun. But I still see you more than I see her. And we're not even working together anymore. <laughs> well, I just find it crazy that we both live here now. Like, I know. what? But you even flew in. She flew in. Oh, no. Were you working in New York for my 40th birthday? She came no, to Connecticut for my 40th yeah, birthday. I don't know if I was living in New York then, but. You're not allowed to bring boyfriends anymore, though, until you figure out which one. You're gonna, I'm just yeah, kidding. That was a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, that a special one. You know, the, do you ever see How I Met Your Mother? Yes. So you know how they have the episode where they don't want to take a picture with the girl at Thanksgiving because there's always a different bimbo in the shot. <laughs> that kind of thing. That's Taylor and her boyfriend bringing them around my birthday parties. But what is the rule? The no ring, no bring? Oh, really? Well, that's interesting. A lot of families who have that rule. Yeah. Well, well, Taylor's allowed to bring whoever she wants. And someday she'll figure out which one's the right fit for her. I. You have to be like, you know, okay. you're the one who tells me if they're keepers or not. Well, I haven't met this one. Well, Although there were some in the past that I thought would be good that I was very wrong on. So don't go yeah, with my extra advice. <laughs> you're not the best judge of character. I'm not the best judge. <laughs> at me. I definitely am not a good judge of character. <laughs> you're really not a good judge of character. I have bad first impression. But like, I have bad instincts. Yeah. I, I'm, I, you I'm just you 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 think everybody is just amazing, and that's not a horrible <laughs> quality. No, but I believe the best about people. Yeah, that's good. That's true. Oh, thanks. Yeah, now I feel better. <laughs> just you know, gets yeah, Melissa. Yeah, I have to pay you a compliment. Oh, you are a very supportive friend. Oh, thank you. You always back up my strange ideas. And you're there for me whenever I need you. Same. You're my support. Yeah. We have some very supportive listeners. We have supportive fans out there that love our podcast, that check us out on YouTube, that rate and review, that do all the things. But now they can support us with merchandise. Yes. You can rep What Women Binge. Yeah. What Women Binge. Merchandise available for you. Give it to your best friend. Give it to your mailman. We're so excited that we can bring this to you guys. You can go to whatwomenbinge.com. And find our merch. And go shopping. And then when you're out and about and you see someone wearing a hoodie emblazoned with our faces or logo, you can be like, oh, I like your hoodie. It'll be a small community of people that listen to What Women Binge. Like and we'll grow word. it. We're hoping you guys will support What Women Binge, not only by listening and by subscribing, but also by representing our merch, right? If they rep it in the streets, then people ask them about, what's Women Binge? Oh, it's this podcast I listen to. And then you right. guys can spread the word. So whatwomenbinge.com. Go shopping. Thanks, guys. Well, we have to ask you some questions that we ask okay. everybody. Hey, I gave you a little sneak peek because uh, some of these are a little difficult. These are our season four questions. Are you ready? If you could live any life, uh, if you could live life as any character in a book or movie, who would it be? Mm. Or TV show. You could add TV show. I was thinking about this, and I the first thing that popped in my head was um, Evelyn Hugo. <gasps> <gasps> we <laughs> love her. <laughs> we just did a book club episode about that. Yeah, that was a great answer. Did it remind you of Rita Moreno? It did. Right? Yeah. We just gave, I gave it to her. Amanda gave me a copy to give to her, her to say this is about you. You need yeah. to read it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, wild. Oh, that's such a good one. Yeah. I would totally. You would be Addie LaRue. I mean, yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know if I would have made it if I was Addie Lorraine. I know. I you think read about that, that all the time. Like I'm resourceful. Yeah, I actually like, have not. I've had that book for so long, and it is. It's a lot. It's very long, but yeah. it's a so good, good one. It's worth it's it. It's good, but it's yeah. The pays the off. Payoff is keep going. Yeah. yeah, I did the audio. I've been doing a lot of audiobooks recently, just driving around Nashville. Yeah, that's been helping. I do me. that at work a lot. Really? Yeah. We actually like the dogs listen to audiobooks and stuff too. It's really cute. Are there certain voices they don't like? And they're oh, well, tell everybody what you're doing right now. Well, I work at the uh, Nashville Humane Association. So come down and get um, a pet. Yeah, come get a puppy. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot. We have a lot of good dogs. I mean, we always have good dogs. I think they're all amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they're all perfect to And me. they all love you. Yeah, yeah, my babies. Are there any voices that they have not allowed you to listen to? Like they get like a little, ooh. Not yet, um, but I do like, uh, y- yesterday I was dealing with one of her dogs and he he was just getting very annoyed with me because I was in his kennel cleaning that I, when I left, I just left my phone in there on like a positive mindset podcast, like just one that I found on Spotify. And I was like, here you go. This is how we're starting our day today. Therapy time. <laughs> there you go. Attitude of gratitude, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, if you had to pick a genre to describe your life, what would it be? Horror. <laughs> well, it seems to be your career in a way. Yeah. If it's not sitcom. <laughs> I do feel like, I, yeah. Live actually like a sitcom in front of a live audience. That's what I kind of feel like. <laughs> I grew up in front of a bunch of people, you know? So, yeah, I think that. my I me, mean, my life basically is Melissa and Joey. Let's be real. <laughs> like, it is. Like, everything that happened to Lennox was happening to me at the same time. Yeah, that's true. I still that's see true. my Aunt Mel all the time. Yeah. Like <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right. I'll take it. Um, if you could choose any actor or actress to play you in your life story, who would you pick? Okay, this is another one that I was thinking of, and like I really do not know. So I was going to ask you, who do you think would play? No, me? I have the, I have a hard time with this one. It's like um, those are questions that when people ask me, I'm like I can't remember an actor's oh, name to like, save my life. Amanda's good at this. I know that's the problem. I can't think of like all of a sudden yeah. like a blank. I'm trying to think of her name. This girl that I'm thinking of, she was very popular in the '90s. See, so we did these questions to each other. Uh, we like when we first started the season, and like we always think of older people, well, not younger. Yeah, no, she'd be too old to play you, obviously, but like a grown up version of you. What's her name? Lily something. Sobieski. Yes. Yeah. Don't they have like that same like Earth child? Yeah, they kind of kinda... do, like in a way. Yeah. She was in, oh my gosh, she's in Deep Impact. Yes. When the wave is coming and she gets on the oh, on the on the scooter yeah. with Elijah oh, Wood. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell yeah. You. She was in a bunch of I think she was Lolita. Was she Lolita? I don't know. She was she was a big she star. She was a in the, lot. Yeah, in like the time. late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, she uh, did a lot of movies. Someone more modern though, let me think. Um Well like Florida oh, like Sydney Sydney Sweet what's her the, name? Sydney Sweeney, but like I don't know. I, Sydney like, Sweeney with like she I would look like that's attitude. just because she's like around my age and blonde. <laughs> I think more Rachel? of like a Florence she was Pugh or Maybe. whatever her name is. Oh, but Florence the Pugh. The attitude, you know, kind of the Yeah, and a little goofy. Yeah. Like, but she's Florence also kind a of a goofy. Kristen Stewart vibe. Oh, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, your acting vibe is a little Kristen Stewart. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, in your opinion, what is the best TV theme song? Oh, man. Um, I mean, I feel like the Golden Girls is a classic. Oh, yeah. Or Laverne and Shirley. Oh, That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shemizel, Shemazel, Hoff yeah. and Toff Incorporated, something like that, right? Oh, Shemil. Shemazel. Shemil, Shemazel. The I one know that, that nobody actually knows the words I know, to. which is why it's so fun. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the hardest part of your job? The hardest part of my job? Um, Are we going to say Humane Society job right now? Well, yeah, I mean, okay. that's, How about yeah. both jobs? Because I want to know. Acting-wise, too? Yeah. Um, I think acting-wise would be the hours. You know, not like necessarily on our show. Our show was great. Oh my god, um, we had the best hours ever. I think but we, we took off Mondays or Fridays. We took yeah, off Fridays. we took off Fridays. <laughs> so we had three day weekends every week. It was the perfect. Well, job. you know why? Like I was always so sick of. I'm like on Friday night when everybody else is hitting happy hour. We are just getting started with what we've been preparing to do all week. It's kind of like football players in a way, I guess, yeah. too. Like we've been preparing all week for this one big performance, and Friday night's the night we get to do it. But like, I want to like you're kind of getting tired at the moment when you're supposed to be getting hyped up and I was like let's do it on Thursday instead yeah. so we- I loved it too because when we did that I had like just turned 21 so I was like cool another night that I can go to the bar <laughs> like, <that's> great <laughs> we'd hit it hard on Monday but yeah Monday Tuesdays we would rehearse Wednesday Thursdays we would film yeah fun. well because it used to be that we would only do our table reads on Mondays and then we were like why don't we just do the table read and if we don't have a lot of changes like we would go to lunch come back and just yeah. we would do our table reads on Thursday morning it got a little confusing because we do a table read on Thursday morning oh we had Tim Conway on our show too yeah that was great what we call a bottle episode which is where you like save little bits of it for the bottle so we filmed a chunk of it one day but he was he was on the decline it was kind of sad 
Yeah. But we also had Catherine Hellman. We had I'd a worked lot with in 1986 as my she was like my adopted mother in a movie I did. And yeah, we had we had some great guest stars. We had some fun. Tucker was on our show. Tucker was on it. Torbit too. our yeah. friend's little boy. And and Mason and Brady, they're they're must joins for SAG now. So if they ever work again, they have to join SAG because of how much they worked on Melissa and yeah. Joey. <laughs> It was just a like family background. affair. It was, it was like Joey's brothers were always on the show. Oh, Joey's brothers were on the show. That's yeah. right. Oh, and some of my Sabrina cast, like David Lasher and Elisa mm-hmm. Donovan. Um, oh, yeah, a little tidbit, though. Tara Reid was supposed to play that part, and she just didn't show up one day. So we called Elisa Donovan, and she flew in from San Francisco and came and was on the show. Wow. Luckily, she's a total pro and could slide right in there yeah. with, with one day's rehearsal. Yeah. That's crazy. Forgot about that. That was interesting. Yeah, she what? like came to the table read and then didn't show up again. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think came back later, and we were like, you, you weren't we, here. Like, we've replaced you. <laughs> we've already shot this. <laughs> so what's the hardest part oh, yeah. about your Humane Society job? Um, well, you know, I deal with dogs and what comes out of dogs a lot. Uh, it's definitely not as glamorous <laughs> as <in> my <laughs> past life. As your um, Lennox costume. Yeah, I mean, it? you know, when I get to work, it's like two hours of straight, like, cleaning in the morning. So I Craft think service like there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It's whatever's in my backpack that day. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever granola bar you yeah. shoved in there. Craft service, by the way, guys, is like our snack table. Does anyone else call it that? Does anyone know what craft service is? Like we call it crafty. Crafty. Uh, I don't think so. Only if you're on yeah. set. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite joke? A favorite joke? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> you can't think like one. my stand-up routine yeah, right give now? Me your no. Hey, how was it working with Kevin James? Tell us that. Uh, it was great. I mean, you know. Was he better than me? Did you like him more than me? Oh my gosh! Do you, you keep in touch with him more than me? You I text him. Compliments. Are you going to be on his podcast? No. <laughs> no, it was fun. It was you know, it was definitely very different. Um, kind of jumps jumping into something like as it wasn't that long after Melissa and Joey, yeah. and I think I was kind of expecting that same like vibe that we all had, and kind of stepping into something that I didn't like have that was a little interesting. But you know, it was still a lot of fun. It was just different. You did great. You held your own on that set, man. Thank you. That seems like it was a tough one. Um, what movie show channel podcast or whatever do you turn on to tune out? Um, uh, yours. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually listen to this podcast. It's just like the stuff you should know podcast on Spotify. Oh. And I kind of listen to Is that. It's called the stuff you should know. I feel like stuff I've you should know that. or like history podcast, which I know sounds horrible. But like if I'm trying to go to sleep, I basically just bore myself yeah, to sleep yeah. with history podcasts. <laughs> Don't do Noble Bloods, though. That's my favorite. And it, you will not be able to go to sleep. Oh, good to it's know. It's gory yeah. and amazing. It's like my favorite. Uh, if this week was a book title, what would it be? This week? <laughs> oh, it was a long, long weekend. Um, oh, geez. The longest weekend. <laughs> that would be the title of the book. It wasn't even a long week. It was just my weekend was a little, little crazy. What happened? Just we, you know, we just have a lot of, a lot of shelter operations. Like Saturday was very busy, which is amazing. We got a lot of dogs adopted. Oh. Um, but just like the sheer volume of people that we had there, just running around, it was, it was a lot. Um, are there? I had heard like during the pandemic there was uh, a lot of dogs were adopted, right? Like there were a lot of empty shelters, but then has it all come rushing back? Yeah, um, we, uh, yeah, a lot of our like partner shelters that we work with, it's been, you know, there's a lot of pleas because people don't have the time or people just got a puppy thinking it was going to be great. And now Uh, like now now the world's opened up again. You know, a lot of the dogs that they adopted aren't socialized because they couldn't go anywhere. So that's like a lot of what I've been hearing is like dogs that are just kind of having some behavioral issues because. That's interesting. My neighbor, when we moved here to Nashville, my neighbor has a uh, golden retriever. And we have two rescues, and um, we used to open the back gate and let them come through, although we had some construction, so now the gate doesn't really open. But he'd never met—the only dogs he's ever met are our dogs, and we haven't seen him in, like, a few months. So, yeah, I wonder if he's socialized. Yeah. Mine definitely are not, other than each other. I take them on walks, and they're not nice, so I'm afraid to take them to a dog park. I know. Amanda helps me. She'll walk one of them because I can't handle them. They're beasts. Well, yeah, last time I was at your house, I think, is when your dog— your dog got out of the gate oh. <laughs> when I was leaving. Your dogs always escape, you guys. I've best, been there when the best way to meet there. me is to find <laughs> yeah. my dog on the street. <laughs> um, if okay, wait, we already did the book title. Oh, what's your go-to karaoke? Go-to karaoke. You know, it changes depending on like the people that I'm with. I mean, I feel like in Nashville, you always kind of have to do like Dolly Parton's, like just kind of the go-to because <laughs> mm-hmm. you know that everybody's going to be singing along. 
Um, Backstreet Boys. Like oh, that's, really? Yeah, I feel like that's a good one. Did you go to the concert Thursday night? Uh, no, but our puppies were there. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, we had puppies from the shelter that went and met that's the Backstreet brilliant. Boys. Because like they were comfort- the Backstreet Boys, literally. We named them after the Backstreet Boys. Aww. So they went and did like a whole photo shoot with them. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, it was really adorable. They were amazing. They like were cleaning up after them, like just no problem with it. It was really cute. Oh, yeah. they're good guys. Yeah, those are really good guys. Yeah, I was like, I can't believe I've held the same puppy that the Backstreet Boys <laughs> held. Like, this is so <laughs> cool. I posted like it on Kevin Instagram. Now? I was like, this, this is awesome. <laughs> what's the but what's the like the song that you like? What's the Backstreet Boys song that you would choose? Um, oh gosh, now I feel like I can't think of the name of any Backstreet Boys song. Of course, yeah, Everybody. yeah. I feel like. What's yeah. the one about him calling the girl, pretending he, he, he he's losing service? That's a in sync song, isn't it? No. Wait, what? No. I don't know what you're talking about. Please hold. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's As Long As You Love Me, Shape of My Heart. The Call. The call. Is, is that, that Backstreet, Backstreet call? I thought that was in sync. Oh. oh. Okay. It's The Call. Yeah, The Call. I love that song. I don't know why. That just That's the one that popped in my head. <laughs> when we're talking that's about the Backstreet karaoke Street one you would boys. go to? I feel like that would be... Yeah, I just... You know I don't what? know if that's a crowd pleaser, you know? It's a little <laughs> bit dark. I like that. It's not yeah. like the... Uh, like. I don't know. I feel like sometimes with these boy bands, and look, these are my friends. I like them a lot. But like sometimes the boy bands, they're always singing like to the girl, right? To make the girl feel important and sexy and, and loved and, and, and I love seen. love how she goes so deep. Right? I know, right? Like, it's so, just like the Backstreet Boys. But I'm like, like <laughs> I can't, like, I don't buy into that whole thing. I'm like, no, you don't like me. You like everybody. So like, I like everybody. the ones that are a little different. Everybody. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Rock your body. <laughs> See, I would go for that yeah. one. Yeah. That's well, that's fun. a good one because then everybody like sings along to it, you know? It's true. And, and everybody's was, like, yeah. You know? <laughs> they don't hear just your voice. <laughs> exactly. That's what you need. When you're bad at karaoke, you got to pick something yeah. that everybody will sing along to. Did we do a singing episode? We didn't. Thank goodness. Did we? That's usually well, I the hope death of We did a Dancing with the Stars episode. We did. That was like early. That's only because Joey and I had both done it and I had just gotten off of it. Um, what was, the, yeah, we didn't, usually there's a musical episode of every, every show. And then it all just goes, Wee. yeah, it's sort of yeah. like what they do to I'm like, I'm surprised we didn't do one keep though, it considering we had Joey. Oh, well we did do the one where he had that 911 video. Oh yeah. It wasn't something about 911 yeah. on my heart. And that's called his brothers for my were heart. there, right? Yes. Yeah. And we just thought it was the silliest thing that we were like watching them. My heart. Something about like call 911 because you broke my heart or something. Yeah. It was something and like. Yeah, because there was a big nine one one on the set, and he they were dancing all in front of it, right? Am I yeah. right? Was this like yeah. a song he recorded? Yes. Okay. Joey also recorded the theme song. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I did not realize. And what I love is at the beginning of each episode, each one of us would alternate doing the. Well, listen, Joey is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Yeah, that's actually one thing that I'm very sad that I never got to do that on a TV show. That was like <laughs> the one thing that I wanted to do. Do it right I now. Never Go let for you it. do it. Here, let's let no, her do it. No, I never did it. Ready? Do it right now. And action. Uh, it's not the same. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that, was that was a Linux comment if I've ever heard one. Come on, uh, Ms. Lunt. I really like your coasters, though. I know. Do we, I have those coasters? Melissa and Joey coasters. I mean, everybody got them. I just use them. Did you throw away your Melissa and Joey coasters? No, I feel like I just didn't I don't know, use them. You want one? You can have one. All right. <laughs> I probably have them if everybody got them. You probably do. <laughs> Although, you, with all your moving around, you probably... Yeah, that's true. Who knows what's in my storage unit in Los Angeles? I mean, you weren't driving when we wrapped the show, so, you know, you probably I didn't put them in your car. I was driving by that point. Oh, my gosh. I, was, <laughs> I always thought it was so weird. This, like, 21-year-old is showing up like... Where, it was. I didn't were, drive here today. I'm going to be completely honest. My boyfriend dropped me off because I still hate driving. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. This is I, why you belong in New York. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. That's your place. I mean, and I thought it would be better here. Like, I was like, oh, I'm moving to Nashville. It's nothing, got, you know, it's not going to be like L.A. traffic. You brought the traffic Oh, with you. And then I was like, oh, wait, everybody Tra- from L.A. moved here, so now the traffic's just <laughs> traffic. as bad. Because <laughs> nobody knows how to drive, apparently. Yeah. Um. All right, wait, last one of these. Uh, what is a line from a show, movie, or book that you'll never forget? Mm-hmm. Like maybe a motto or something you'd live by. Yeah. Oh, geez. This is like these questions. Like, every time somebody asks me, it's like I've never seen a movie or a TV show. <laughs> Um, Go blame. you know, actually, and I know that it's just because it's fresh in my head, but like something that I did always remember from Melissa and Joey that you said that I like, I've always found it just so funny that sticks with me is when you're talking to Joey and you're like, there's always a butt with you. And then you're like, I can see it. I can see a butt in your face. <laughs> and like, I was like maybe 16 when we filmed that episode. So of course, like that sense of humor was so up my alley. And I just found it the funniest thing ever. That must be why Mason's like... Everything that you would find funny at 16, he'll like on the yeah. show right now. 
Oh, that's good. He's Mason was obsessed with The Office and like Parks and Rec and I don't even know. Now he's watching like Love Island or something. He he and our babysitter are watching Love Island together. That's a, but which I think is so weird. My sixteen year old <laughs> football player is watching Love Island. The babysitter. I just but then. I can't he, believe he's driving now. That's so I know, crazy. Mason drives. He's a big boy. He loves to drive. He'll drive you around. All right, cool. If your boyfriend's Great. sick of it, he loves to drive. He's looking for any excuse. He'll be your Uber driver all Is day long. Is he a good driver, though? He's actually a really good driver. Okay. I don't, taught him how to drive. You or Mark. I'm a great driver. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Hang on. Another little Joey tidbit is that he always had these fast, fancy cars, like lots of them. Oh, and yeah? he, we had our parking spaces, right? It was mine and then his. And then I think, was it you? And then yeah. and then Nick? And uh, I didn't have a car in L.A. at the time because I just moved to the East Coast. And so we were driving. I took my giant Dodge Ram with snow tires and a big old um, covered truck bed down to L.A., drove it from Tahoe down and drove this beast. We called it the beast. Yeah, it was and massive. And I'd park in that space. It was so big. And he'd pull in next to me with his little car. But it was everyone was always like, yeah. her car is so huge next to yours. Yeah, it would be funny like if Melissa and I went anywhere together because it's this big car and then both of us having to fully just jump out Literally. of it. Literally. <laughs> <Yeah. ride down laughs> it was fun. It. There were Didn't your assistant also like ram through the, uh, accidentally ran oh, through the she gate? she drove my truck home one day and she ran through the gate at the, at, yeah. at the, the lot at Radford, um, CBS lot. She ran right through the oh, gate. Yeah. Didn't even stop. Like, just like, didn't see it. Just vroom, right through it. It was amazing. Not even a dent on the car. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Gate was gone. The car gate was completely gone. fine for I wonder days. how often that happens. Uh, I don't think it happens that often. <laughs> yeah, I don't think a lot of people are driving cars that size. No, not in L.A. Oh. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you show up, like, we would show up at, like, different kind of Emmy parties and whatnot, and people would be like, who's that getting out of that giant? They'd be like, look at you in that giant truck. You drive up to it in your giant truck. Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah. you know what? You're going to get more attention in a di- giant Dodge Ram with snow tires than you are in, like, a Ferrari or a Lambo. Like a, or getting out in our, like, cocktail dresses. Yep. Down, <laughs> you get down, down. Yep. Like, you get down. Yeah, you get down. You're holding that. The, what I call the oh shit handle and you're like trying to get down and you're like hey hey or here's the keys and yeah. you're like we can't park this this doesn't fit in our garage and then you have to drive it down the street park it yourself walk back in your heels sucks <laughs> it's fun for a minute it's, it's called Uber <laughs> no but like I know no I always like to I feel like myself. Uber wasn't like I don't know we didn't use Uber Uber a lot. wasn't like it wasn't really a big thing taxis yeah there was this thing called Home James where they would Apparently, there was a, uh, a drivers that had electric sc- or scooters or electric scooters, and they could fold them up and put them in the trunk of your car. So they'd scoot to you, drive your car home for you, and then scoot back to where they were going. So it was kind of like wow. an early Uber. Wow. Like on a moped. Like a moped, yeah. Or like some kind of foldable bike or scooter. Yeah. Hmm. Isn't that crazy? That's interesting. I think they would wear suits, too. It was only in L.A. Yeah. That That's sounds great idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, great idea. And we used to have Pink Dot. I don't even know if that still yeah, exists. I don't think Pink Dot's there anymore. There's this one store in L.A. that 24 hours you can get cigarettes, alcohol, yep. whatever you need. They'll drive it. To, it was before DoorDash. Yeah. It was the it only. It was the only place that you could get like 24 hour delivery. And now that's just. Now everybody's so got easy. It. You got Postmates, you got DoorDash, you got Uber Eats, yep. you got them all. I mean, thank um, goodness we had those things during the pandemic because. I know. Like well, that's grocery why they pickups and stuff. Came about, and, right? Yeah. I haven't been in a grocery store unless it was absolute necessity since. I mean, it's been years now. Yeah. yeah. Really? See, I need to go and see stuff or I forget what I want. I can't that possibly. That keeps me from buying the things that I want. Oh. Oh, I because see. Because I yeah. get what I need. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, see, in this, Mark is the one who cooks the most. So he knows. Like, But this morning I made sausage. Guys. Really proud. Husband's out of town. Made sausage this morning for the kids. They didn't eat it, so I did. <laughs> but I actually had started off my day with I I I punctured one of the sausages after I'd heated it back. I had to, of course after the kids went to school, I had to heat it back up. Punctured it. All the juice squirted right in my <laughs> oh, face. No. It was like dripping down my face. I was like, man, that's what I get. Eating all the sausage. <laughs> but uh, no, Mark usually does the cooking, so he does the grocery shopping because he knows what we're missing, and he'll just say, "What do you need?" And I'll be like, you know, oat milk and yogurt, and like. Yeah, I well, just get I feel the two like, though, you have, like, very specific things that you eat, though. You know, like, you kind of have a routine of, like, what you eat. Sort of. And then I eat the crap that my kids leave behind. The yeah. Old waffles and stuff sitting on the counter <laughs> that I shouldn't be, but I do. That's how I gained 20 pounds in Nashville. Um, you want to do the this or that? Sure. All right. These are easier. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hero or villain? Villain. I <laughs> knew that. <laughs> Plans or surprises? Plans. <laughs> Caffeine or alcohol? Caffeine. Chocolate or fruity? Chocolate. Dress up or dress down? Dress down. <laughs> Introvert or extrovert? Introvert. 
Fizzy or flat? Fizzy. Morning person or night owl? Morning person. Really? I know. It's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> this is how she can work at the Humane yeah. Society, though, because I, mean, I bet you have to be there, like, at the crack of dawn. Uh, yeah, tomorrow I have to be there at 6.30. Ooh. Ooh. Righty or lefty? Righty. Staycation or vacation? Vacation. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait! Pull out your phone. We have to look at your emails. We have to judge you. Oh, I don't even know. It's what I'm so at this bad. Week. All right, we all check them. Let's see. I've done better. Well, we know I got a phone call during this. This is so bad. I don't even want to tell you. Okay. Well, my work email is not as bad, but all right. What you got two? So what two. are they? My work email is like a hundred and sixty. Oh. I, <laughs> but not, it's a lot of like that's not bad reminders and stuff. Just hold on. All right, but my like personal email, which is still some of my work email, like not my specific shelter email, is one hundred and forty two thousand nine hundred and eighty three. One hundred and forty two thousand. Yes! Welcome to Team Amanda. Basically, it's good to have you here. Don't email me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my, text my messages gosh, are bad too. My I text messages are your texts. My texts are 273, and my oh. missed calls and voicemails are 221. So I don't even understand how that's allowed. She does not want to be communicated yeah, with. Just don't so you're one of these people that, like, when you leave <laughs> a message, me a letter. or when you go to leave a message, and it's like, this voicemail box is full. Please try again later. Yeah. yeah. If you Great. have to leave me a voicemail, send me a text message, which I also which will you not won't read. Check. But <laughs> So you don't read them at all. Mm-mm, now I really know no. why the last time we saw each other, we're like, okay, Thursday, and then never yeah, heard I'm from just, again. I, yeah, I really try, like, not to be on my phone a lot, or, I don't know, like, there's a lot of stuff. If it's, like, a last text message in a conversation, then I won't open it. So I think that's probably what a lot of mine is, you know? It's time to go through them. Like, next time you're just, like, sitting Ugh. on the toilet, waiting at the DMV, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, like, just maybe. Just look through them. But then I'm probably going to get anxiety because it's going to be something that I should have read that was like two months ago. And I'm like, oh, oops. <laughs> and just start deleting them now. You know, out of sight, out of mind. Well, <laughs> just start deleting them now part, so you lost your phone. Part of that, like, adult ADD life is just going, I'm so sorry I missed this. Yeah. Oh, that is And so owning up large. to yeah. it because that's really That's what I have to do with do. a lot of my, I mean, because right now, so I'm at, I'm, I'm at 62. I've been trying to keep it below 50. I have three calls I'm today. At... But they're all doctors. Oh. 8,998 currently. How, what? How many? 8,998. We can do better. I'll hit 9,000 by the end of this podcast. You better not. <laughs> you better not. You're well, gonna, at this point, like, you're gonna, I was mouth. in the 100,000 range when we first started yeah. this, and she, I thought she was going to hold me down. And my head almost exploded. Yeah. I can't me. believe you. It's We're also, though, I mean, you. it is a thing of like having ADD where I'll also be like, I'll look at something and be like, oh, I'll respond to that in a second. And, and yeah, then three days later, I'm like, oh. Oops. <laughs> you just have to own it and and tell them to expect it again. I mean, it yeah. will. It's going to happen again. Well, they like most people know, who know me. Yeah, most people who know me are well aware. <laughs> yeah. The no, worst I, is when it's like professional situations, and I'm like, I will get that done as soon as I get home. And then I get home, and I'm like, children, animals, yeah. food. I can't do it life, when the kids are sleep. home. I can't. I, I tell everyone if you want me, just don't. Anytime before three. Because once the kids come home, all hell breaks loose. Doesn't matter how much I've cleaned the house, it is a disaster zone. Doesn't matter how many emails I've checked, all of a sudden the phone's blowing up and the emails are coming in. And I'm like, I can't. I can't do it. Speaking of, do you guys see, I look at the little red dots on my phone and they drive me nuts. But I have four on my Be Real. Do you do Be Real, Taylor? I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's like this. So it's like a new social media app. But the thing is, like, you have to take a picture at the second it tells you to. And it takes a picture out the front and the back of your phone at Why? the same time. What? So the idea is that you don't have time to print. I'm with you. don't you. have time to filter. You don't have time to make like get a good lighting or good setting. You have to just be real and take that picture. So okay. a lot of the kids are doing it these days, Taylor. I mean, that's cool. I so, appreciate that. It just sounds... Well, so my friends, we just decided like f- five of us do it. So obviously the four of them, they were late because I did it at lunch with you. Yes. The, but see, this one's walking her dog. This one's oh at the jewelry store. Where she works. This one's doing schoolwork. This one's in the bathroom. Oh <laughs> you have two minutes to post it, but I think you can. I think you have. I seven definitely have seen people posting those, and I definitely thought those were all like pictures of FaceTime calls, and that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's be real. So there's only like five of us on it. So every day Until we don't know when this it's goes be. out, and suddenly everyone's yeah. following you on be real. No, you can't. You have to like you just do your friends. Oh, so it's like, or you can open it up to everyone, but mine's just my friends. We were experimenting so we could see what our kids were doing. But basically, it's like it gives you a warning. It's like, hey, in two minutes, you you have to post a, a picture here, 
And you don't know what it, like, sometimes it's in the morning, sometimes it's at night, sometimes it's once a day, sometimes it's not at all. What if you're doing things that you don't need to be taking pictures of? And you don't of? take a picture. <laughs> you don't have to take the picture. But the idea is, like, that all of you do it at the same time, and then you all get it. But the frustrating thing is when you go to check it, like, you, it's not something you can go check. Right. It's just done when it's done, you know. Yeah. Unless you have, a, like, a are lot of Are your kids friends. allowed to use, like, social media, self, like, what are your... The 16-year-old is now, the 14, not so much. He's trying to get explicit. He's trying to... um get explicit lyrics on his phone now. That's his big fight. Mm. Um, the nine-year-old, he's just... He's One just, thing at a time. Okay, let me put it this way. He's a he's a, he's a fabulous he's tornado. Yeah. yeah. He, but he is just this kid. He's, he's really smart and clever, and he just knows things. I don't know if it's because he has two big brothers or it's the way his brain works, but he knows things he shouldn't know. Right. Like, the kid understood sarcasm at one-year-old. Yeah. You know? So it's that kind of thing. So he just... Um, he just... He, he's, he's way ahead of all my other kids. He's like... Just as far as knowing things, wanting to know things, being curious, taking it in, remembering things. And uh, he just he figures stuff out. Yeah. Like all like if we turn off all of his things on his iPad, he's back on him. Yeah. He's not on social. But I did catch him talking to someone on a remote control the other night while playing Fortnite. He's like, oh, mom, it's a seven year old in Nashville. I'm like, yeah, right. It's a 56 year old in Saskatchewan. Get off that. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, I don't know. I just. uh I try to keep him safe from it. And Mason, it was a little bit easier with the first one. Then you kind of like let off the reins a little bit. Yeah. But you have to see them. I know. Especially now that they're watching Melissa and Joey again. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. So fun. Well, you have to come back. We'll do an actual watch episode. How about that? I would love that. Maybe we'll get Nick and Joey on Zoom or something. Get them the, to Or say make hi. them to come to Nashville. We should get them to come. I feel to like Nick would come to Nashville. Nick would totally come to Nashville. Especially if he can go to a honky tonk, ride one of those bikes, bicycle uh, bars. No. I, I'm Nick would. I'm I kidding. Don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you do Joey would ride. Come a to Nashville, bar. ride a bicycle bar. Or <laughs> the bachelor. Oh, we're for. <laughs> no, I feel like Joey would do that only if he could be competitive about who pedaled faster or something. Right? <laughs> Joey's Wait, having that, a baby. I saw that. What? Joey got yeah. married and is having a baby at yeah. 46. We are exactly the same age. We're two days apart. We have very weird. Like parallel lives in a yeah, weird way. It is very strange. Like he's got all brothers. I have a lot of sisters. He has girls. I have boys. His ex wife went to Auburn. My husband's an Alabama fan. Like it was all very, very That's strange, very intertwined. Bizarre. But he's uh, remarried and he's having a baby at 46. Wow. Good for him. I'm two days older than him. So if we make it a competition, maybe he'll come. Mm -hmm. I think so. Something's got to be a competition for him to come. Yeah. All right. Or tell him there's a Batman audition. And then he'll show up. He wants to be Batman so bad. Bless. It's, it's hard. It's cute. Yeah. yeah. It's like his lifelong dream. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. This, this was so fun. Yeah, this yeah. was fun. Yeah, let's do it again. Okay. Mwah. Thank you guys for joining us here at What Women Binge. Can you do us a favor and give us an Apple podcast review? It helps a lot. Yeah, and while you're at it, you can follow What Women Binge on Instagram. And follow me on Instagram. At Amanda WWB. If you like listening to the podcast, you would love seeing it. So you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Melissa Joan Hart official for full episodes, bonus content, and so much more. What Women Binge is produced by Laughagram Studios. Our wonderful theme song was written and produced by my cute husband, Mark Wilkerson. Video production by Matt Giesler and Jay Hawley. Audio by Matt Lott. Production assistant, Jen Best. And she is the best. What Women Binge is distributed by Podcast Heat. For more information, visit podcastheat.com. Do you have a question or a comment or a topic you want to suggest for the show? Well, we are listening. Email us at wwbquestions at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you.